Hi, I'm Rita Sanders, Mayor for the City of Bellevue. And on Monday, August 21st, is the Great American Eclipse. It's going to be a beautiful event. And today we have with us Dr. Jack Gable from Creighton University, who will talk about the Great American Eclipse for Monday, August 21st. Remember, safety first. So you may have heard there's an eclipse coming up, <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, one week from today, actually, August 21st, Monday, there will be a, uh, a total solar eclipse sweeping through the United States, including parts of Nebraska. And so what I wanted to do tonight in my presentation was to talk a little bit about what you can expect to see, what can you experience, um, whether you go to the path of totality or if you're viewing from Bellevue or, or the surrounding area. Um, I want to actually talk a little bit about the science behind eclipses to go, uh, it's really a fascinating story and, and really an amazing story that we get these total solar eclipses at all. So I'm going to go over the, the basic ideas in astronomy somewhat. Um, safety is a key issue, you hear this in the news good, uh, for good reason. There's a lot of concern about people damaging their eyes, that concern is very, very real. So I'm going to talk about that. And then if I have time, I'm just going to uh, talk about a couple of random things that I think are really neat about, about eclipses in history. So first of all, what will we experience? So there are um, uh, basically two uh, experiences, I would say, associated with this eclipse. And it really depends on where you observe the eclipse and when you observe it, what you're going to see. So the big event, the thing that people are really excited about, is to see a total eclipse of the sun. So from a narrow 70 mile wide or so swath of land that's going to streak across the United States from west to east at over 2,000 miles an hour, if you happen to be in that 70 mile wide path, then you will see something that is considered to be uh, by people who've seen them, I have not seen a total eclipse. People who've seen them uh, claim over and over that they're the most incredible natural events that exist. And so I want to highlight that seeing the total solar eclipse, finding a place along that 70 mile wide path to view it, if at all possible, is worth it. Okay? So what makes total solar eclipses so interesting and exciting and sought after is one is the experience of it all. What is it like to be in one? And we'll talk about that. But also the rarity of being able to see one. Most people in the world, most people in the history of humanity have not observed a total solar eclipse. And here we have an opportunity to drive a mile, uh, sorry, an hour and a half south of, of Bellevue and see one. So this is really a unique opportunity. I can't stress that enough. And the fact that the shadow of the moon, the total umbral shadow, where the sun is completely blocked out, sweeps so rapidly across the surface of the earth, 2,000 miles an hour. It's going to go from the Oregon coast on the western coast of the US to the South Carolina coast in the southeast in 90 minutes. It's going to move across the US in 90 minutes the 70 mile wide diameter circle. So it's a fleeting event. That's part of what makes it rare as well. The maximum you're gonna, amount of time you're gonna be in this eclipse, the maximum possible is just over two and a half minutes. So it is a brief fleeting thing. In a map like this, these maps are really important to start out to think about what we're gonna see and where you're gonna see that. So if you can see that yellowish swath that goes from the Oregon coast to the South Carolina coast and passes all the way the length of Nebraska, right, from western Nebraska down through southeastern Nebraska. That is the, uh, the precious path of totality. That is the place and only in that zone will you see the main event which is the complete blocking out of the sun, the total eclipse. So now if we zoom into Nebraska, this is what's relevant to us, this shows more detail about where you might go if you wanted, if you were able to take Monday off. Unfortunately, it's not on a Saturday. Um, if you were to take Monday off and go somewhere, 
you would want to go as close as you can to the center of that path. The maximum amount of totality that you will experience is right down the middle of that swath. The further away you get from that center line, the shorter the amount of totality. And if you're going down to see it, totality is what it's all about. So if you're along that line going down the middle, you'll get about two and a half minutes. Uh, our physics department and a bunch of middle schools are going uh, near Tecumseh, Nebraska. We're having an outreach event there. And we're going to get over two minutes of totality there. Where will you be? I will be there on a, 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 a farm outside of Tecumseh. And I can't tell you where because it's a closed event. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I can say. <laughs> um, now, if you were going to view from Lincoln, Lincoln is in the path. Omaha's not. If you lived in Lincoln or went to school in Lincoln or worked in Lincoln, that's fantastic. By all means, go outside around 1 p.m., observe the totality. But if you are going to travel somewhere to see the total eclipse, which you should do if you can, don't go to Lincoln. Because you can see Lincoln is right on the edge. So they have a much shorter amount of time of total eclipse. And again, the totality is the really big event. So what will you see? Let's, let's break it down into if you're in that special 70 mile wide swath that sweeps across the US, or if you're outside of it, say you're in Bellevue. By the way, I don't want to downplay uh, what it will be like if you, don't, if you aren't able to go down to that path. It's still going to be an absolutely amazing event to view it right here from Bellevue, absolutely. So I, I don't want to take away from that. That's going to be an incredible experience. So what you will see is, let's say that you are going to the path of totality. You will first see around 11.30 a.m. or so, you will see the moon start to pass in front of the sun. So it'll be like the moon's taking a little bit of bite out of the edge of the sun. Over the course of an hour and a half, the moon will cover more and more of the sun, so the sun will look more and more like a crescent shape. Then around 1.03 p.m. in Omaha, you will get the maximum eclipse. Now, because Omaha and Bellevue are not in the, the path of totality, the entire sun will never be totally blotted out. But incredibly, 98% of the sun is going to be blocked. It's going to be incredible. There will be just a narrow, the thinnest of slivers of sunlight that you're able to see. It's going to look like all of those except the middle one, <laughs> depending on when you look. And so, in fact, that's a good question. What I'd encourage you to do if you're in Omaha is to go out at 1130 with your special shades, which I'm going to talk about, and take a look at it. And then if you can stay out the full three hours, great. But if you're working or whatever, come back out in 20 minutes or a half hour and take a look at how it's changing. If you're able to, make sure you're out around 1 o'clock, a few minutes after. That's when the maximum eclipse will happen. So what will you see if you are not in the path of totality? Like we said, again, I don't want to downplay this. This is going to be an absolutely exciting event to see. What you will see, and by the way, everybody in the United States is going to be able to view a partial eclipse on that day. Everybody. That's how far of a zone on the surface of the Earth sees the par partial. Uh, sun will gradually blot out more and more of the sun, and then in Omaha and Bellevue, 98% will be blotted out. Now is a good time to make my first stress of the point. If you are not in the path of totality at all times, even if there's only a 2% sliver of the sun showing, you have to wear eye protection if you're going to look directly at the sun. Absolutely, there's no question. If somebody tells you otherwise, correct them. You have to. 100% of the time that you're viewing the eclipse, not during totality, you must wear the solar shades or something like that. Why? Because even when only 1% of the sun is showing, just the, the, the smallest of slivers, it's still 10,000 times brighter. That little 1% sliver of the sun is 10,000 times brighter than when you have a total eclipse and all you see is the corona. If you are viewing in the path of totality, 
which I'd recommend if possible, again. What will you see? Well, you'll see the exact same thing for the first hour and a half, around 11.30, depending on where you are. The moon will gradually start to cover the sun. More and more of the sun will be covered. But then the special event, the unique event happens around 1.03 p.m. where I'll be, the moon will entirely cover the sun. And at that time and that time only, you can take off your solar shades and look directly at the sun with the unaided eye. So what will you see as it approaches? I, like I say, I haven't seen it, so I'm really looking forward to it. But I've read a lot about it and I've heard a lot about it. And uh, the, the, you can just imagine the excitement that builds. Everybody knows precisely when it's going to happen. You're looking at your watches. You're looking with your solar shades. By the way, even in the path of totality, until the sun is entirely blocked out, you must wear uh, shades, filters. You must look at it through a filter. Yes? When will the next one be? I'll get to that in a little bit. <laughs> so as the totality approaches, you get these streams of light. The moon isn't a perfect sphere. There are craters and cliffs on it. And as the last streams of light of the sun rays poke through the rugged terrain of the, of the moon, you see these shafts of light coming around the edge. And then at the last moment, there's something they call the diamond ring effect, which is the last ray of sunlight, and then you get totality. And only after that thing, uh, the diamond ring uh, effect comes, only when it's totally dark do you take your shades off. So there's the, the appearance of the sun, which must be incredible, but there's also the entire surroundings. It is this strange sensation that is just hard to describe from what I've heard from people. So if you happen to be at a vantage point where you can see f far to the west, you might see the sun's shadow, the 70 mile wide shadow, sweeping towards you at 2,000 miles an hour. <laughs> then you see it hit you and the sky goes dark, way faster than any sunset. So the sky becomes like a deep dusk, right? Well after the sun has set, not deep dark night, but it's dark enough that you can see bright stars and the bright planets. And we'll take a look at what that might look like. Um, and the temperature drops. I've heard of temperatures dropping up to 10 degrees in a matter of, of seconds, seconds or minutes. You hear about birds being confused, right? Animals are, like we are, our, uh, our cycles are determined by daylight, and all of a sudden, at 1 p.m. in the middle of the day, the light's gone. And so you hear about birds chirping or getting ready to roost, nocturnal animals starting to come out. The sky is glowing this, this strange bluish light, from what I hear. And if you look up, if you look at that middle picture of the sun on the left, with the moon entirely blocking out the sun, you see a dark hole where the sun should be. That's the backside of the moon. I've heard it's darker than any darkness of night. And you see these ethereal streams of light coming off it. That's called the corona. The only time human beings can see the corona, this million degree streams of light that are coming off the sun, the only time in all of humanity is in the special time of being in an eclipse. So these are some of the, the, the features that you can see with your eye during totality. You see that ethereal corona, this million degree gas streaming off of the surface. You know, it, it's really interesting. We know so much about our universe. We especially know so much about our, our solar system, but scientists still don't know how that corona gets the way it is. We don't know how you can have the surface of the sun be 6,000 degrees, and this million degree uh, streamers of plasma on the outside. We're not sure how that happens. So scientists are actually going to be doing real science during this. They're going to be taking measurements of the corona. Okay, so that's, that's what you will experience. What I'd like to talk about now is why this happens. What is it you know, astronomically that makes a, uh, a solar eclipse happen? 
And I think by taking a little bit of a, a look at that, we can appreciate even more how special this event is. At least I think so. To start out with, I like to show this, this um, video that was put together by the American Museum of, of Natural History. But basically what, why I like to show this and what this is, is it gives us a sense of our place in the universe, the universe on the grandest of scales. And so we can kind of set the stage when we're thinking astronomically about what's happening. I like us to think about being outside of the Earth and looking at the moon going around the Earth and the Earth going around the sun. But to get a full appreciation for that, I like to start out with the biggest picture possible. So what we're doing is we're looking at a simulation of the universe at large. So each one of these dots that you're seeing, those green dots, represents a galaxy. And what a galaxy is, is a collection of billions of stars, right? And there's one special galaxy, one out of hundreds of billions, that we zoom in. That's our Milky Way galaxy. And if we zoom in, we see that that Milky Way galaxy is in turn made up of hundreds of billions of stars, more or less like our sun. Billions of those stars have planets. Certainly some of them are planets like our own. And now we've zoomed into our special star, which really isn't special at all. It's just an average star in an average galaxy. And now we see the paths of the planets. There are the outer planets, Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus, and Saturn. And as we zoom in closer and closer, we can see the rocky planets. Our favorite planet is right there, the Earth. And then that little disk going around it is the moon. So I think it's fascinating that this eclipse that we're going to see that's causing so much excitement and that we know, frankly, so precisely how it's going to operate and gives us such an idea of the grandeur of our universe and our physical place in it, it really involves the very closest thing to us on Earth. It's the thing that's right in our neighborhood, the moon and the sun. All right, so now let's look at uh, at the moon and the sun and the earth, the motions that lead to a, a solar eclipse. So really, the main thing, of course, is the main things are the moon and the sun. Let's take a look at the moon first. So there's this idea out there. I teach uh, uh, astronomy, intro astronomy classes, and a lot of times I've found that there's a confusion about what causes the phases of the moon, the lunar phases, and the eclipse, and there's a mixing up of the ideas. So what causes the lunar phases, the thing that we notice most about the moon, if we ever go out and look up and see it, um, uh, what causes those is different than the thing that causes eclipses. So let's talk about what causes the, the, the phases. So if you were to go out tonight, you would actually see, well, you wouldn't see anything until about midnight, and you'd see that the moon is going to, rise, it'll be in a quarter phase. If you were to go out the next night, you would see that it is slightly different shape, right? It would be a, a crescent. And if you went out the next night, you'd see it was a smaller crescent and on and on and on. So what causes the phases of the moon is the relative position of the moon as it goes in its monthish, 28-day long journey around the Earth relative to the sun. So the way I like to explain it to my students is to get a picture like that shown in your mind. The moon is going around the Earth once a month or so, and every day, except the very special times of lunar eclipses, which we won't worry about, but every day, every moment, half of the moon is lit up, and half is in dark, just like the Earth is. Right? But depending on where the moon is in its orbit around the Earth, we see different parts of that lit up phase, different parts of the day part. So for example, when it's in that position on the left that's listed full, the entire day half of the moon is facing us. So we see the full lit up face of the moon. A week later, that thing down on the bottom called third quarter, which is the phase it is tonight, by the way, only half of the lit up phase of the moon is facing us. So the part of the moon that we see is half of its light and half of its dark. That's why we see the third quarter. And then a week later, and now we're actually getting to something relevant to an eclipse, that thing listed on the right as new, what you see 
is the half of the moon that's lit up is facing away from us, right? So the half of the moon that's facing us is dark. The moon is still, has a half of it being day, it's just not facing us. <coughs> so that phase, the new phase, is when we get solar eclipses. And the reason is because when the moon is in that position, it can block the sun's light, right? The sun is over to the right on all these pictures. So how does this happen then? What causes a solar eclipse? What's happening is, in this picture, the sun is to the left. The earth is in the center and the moon is, is to the left a little bit. What's happening is, I'm sorry, the, the sun is to the right here. What's happening is the moon casts a shadow, right? The sun is over here, the moon's a solid object that blocks its light. Because the sun is a disk and not a point, given its distance, it forms a tapered shadow. Can you see that? The shadow is bigger just to the left of the moon and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. We need the moon to be right there. You see that? Where the small, narrow, tapered part of the shadow is just barely reaching the Earth. We need that complete darkened shadow of the moon, the silhouette of the moon, to actually touch the moon and it's in, uh, Earth. It's incredible, isn't it? The distance of the moon, given its size, is just right, just perfectly right. It's pure coincidence. It's just the right size, given its distance, to barely make a shadow on the surface of the Earth. 70 mile, teeny 70 mile wide shadow. Okay, so you look at that and you say, all right, the moon goes around the Earth every 28 days or so, so we should get a total solar eclipse every time, every month, right? 12 times a year. But we don't. We keep hearing that these total solar eclipses are so rare that most people in the world have never seen them. So let's look at why they're rare. There's a few corrections that we need to make to that picture that we had. It turns out that the moon's orbit around the Earth isn't in the same plane as the Earth's orbit around the sun. So if you think about the, however, because you are using binoculars and you're focusing the light, you have to be absolutely sure that you put those down before the first gleams of sunlight come in. But yet you can during that special couple of minutes of totality. Really want to stress that this is the, the, the experience of the total eclipse is a different experience. It is a unique experience. The sky will, I mean, imagine 98% of the light from the sun is blocked out. The sky will darken a bit, but it won't be like dusk. You won't be able to see stars and the corona is just too dim to see even when just a sliver of the sun is showing. So you won't see the corona. What makes this more dangerous, there's two things going on with an eclipse. One is, especially here in Bellevue, two, only 2% two of the light's shining. There's definitely enough light there to damage your eyes, but it's so much dimmer that it's easier to keep staring at it. And plus, we want to keep looking at it. It's fascinating. So that's what makes this particularly dangerous. dangerous. So what I would say, though, is if you're worried about your child, um, they, they will probably be okay, certainly in a car. They will probably be okay just being outside, playing, doing something. But if you're worried, go inside. It's not worth taking a chance. Nothing's worth it. And I want to take this opportunity to stress. I've been talking about totality is a special event. Totality is a special event. It is. But that is not to take anything away from what you will view right here. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing to see just a sliver of the sun.